Hey. So I realise it's been a while. I um, haven't been on for as, as much as I'd wanted to be over the past couple of weeks. Um, mainly because with what's been going over on at GW, I've just lost all enthusiasm for Warhammer, most of its forms anyway. Um, so I've actually been throwing myself into something and I started this project um, when I was in America. Obviously, I, I, things fell apart and so I, I didn't really get as much into it as I wanted to. Um, this project has had very many forms over the past couple of months. It's taken six months altogether. Um, but finally, that, that, that embryonic idea that I had, that I shared with you guys, must have been last year, the year before, it's finished, it's done. Um, I literally, it's fresh off the press, I just finished it a couple of hours ago. So, I just finished writing it a few hours ago. And I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted to bring it on here just so you can see it in all of its glory. Um, I will make it available, but I'm not letting it go for free. I can't. <laughs> I'm earning good money teaching, but if you're good at something, never give it away for free. So um, I'm yet to decide how much this is going to be. It's probably going to be like five quid on Patreon or something. Um, but I'm just giving you a quick preview, quick snapshot of Black Coats. All right, the Western Dark Fantasy RPG, and this to me it has been a, a long time coming. It's taken like a long time to distill all those ideas down and really take out the stuff that was unnecessary. I, I tend to add a lot of stuff as a writer that I don't need to add. That I, I I just get overexcited and I start adding things all over the place. Um, it's almost like a feature creep, but writing. Um, so. Right now, I, I decided um, a month or two ago to come back to this idea, strip away everything that was unnecessary, uh, create a really to-the-point law uh, of the world, to the point, right up to the point, and that's all you need to know. Uh, there's, there's mystery in there, there's all sorts of stuff going on, and I'm really proud of it. So this is Black Coat. I'm not going to read all of it, it's going to give you a quick preview of, of what's going on. So, this is an actual, fully ready-to-go RPG. It's finished. It has f a full rule set. It has um, all in the one pack. It has full rule set. It has full law. Uh, the law is right at the start, right up front. Uh, we have a, a... It's like you find in any RPG. It's, you're well, there's a welcome page. There is... You know, I, I, I read you some touchstones down here of, of what the game is about and, and what kind of media you should look at to get into the mood of black coats. Okay, we've got what, what, the, what the type of game that it is. Now, the type of games that I like, as most of you know, are narrative-based games. Okay, these are not um, games that are, uh, you know, uh, relying on rules and stats and, and all these different things. For me, RPGs need to be about the story, and that's what this is. It's, it's all about the story. It's all about being... Um, together around a table telling a story of different factions and different people and different monsters and, and different losses that you take over time that's what this is all about and it's a, it's a collaborative effort black coat is do not come into black coats thinking you're going to be the best character the bestest 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 person of all time um if you want to go and play dungeon and dragons feel free that's that's over there this is not dungeon and dragons this is a a brutal game um you will probably say goodbye to characters. You know, black coats are not infallible in the setting. You are facing things that should kill you. Um, and you're being very brave in the process too. And people recognize that, but still. As we say here, the most important rule of black coats, the story comes first, always. So everyone's sitting around a table. Okay, round a table, just having a really, really, really good time playing some playing some black coats. Um, so, the lore of Black Coats, the world that it is set in, um, I'd like you to imagine a um, Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay, imagine that world. Imagine the cities of Red Dead, like Saint Denis, places like that, are really built up. Are really huge cities. I'm talking London sized in the 1800s, okay? Um, throw in the, the technology that is, is, is kind of advanced. 
uh, but to use the, but to use such technology, you need to strip away the human soul. Okay, because the, 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 the human soul powers such advanced technology. As such, it's very controversial and very, very rare. Um, so that technology actually messed up the process of reincarnation of souls. Okay, so in this setting, there was a there was a uh, a process of reincarnation where your soul would go to heaven and it would stay there and then it would come back maybe. But you know, people were sort of trying to figure out what happened to the soul. They knew it existed, but as we started using it in technology, souls weren't going to heaven anymore, and that broke heaven. Heaven became hell. It became this this horrible dimension from which demons and devils and, and all sorts of things started hurling themselves out and tearing down everything that that people had built. And the setting that we have uh, is called the Deathless Lands. And the Deathless Lands are a place where you don't get an afterlife. You know? Once you're dead, your soul comes back. As a demon, as, as whatever, it, it comes back. You need to be exorcised in this setting. If you're not exorcised, then you're likely to come back and cause a lot of harm to people. Um, the Deathless Lands are a land where the, the empire that built this technology, the soul technology, uh, they fled to this, this part of the world. They, they fled to this beautiful part of the world that was an elven paradise. The elves used to run this place. And now humans came in, smashed it all apart, and now we have this big industrial empire over there um, that are all fighting over the last remnants of humanity and, and, of, and of sanity because everywhere else in this world is called the Driftwood. It's a huge wasteland caused by the breaking of heaven, that big war with the, with the demons and devils that went on. Okay? And uh, so now we have the, the, the Dominion, which is the main human faction in this world, which are desperately trying to keep the demons out and trying to, to build and build and build so that they can get, uh, so that they, they, they can actually survive in this world that they created. And working for the Dominion, the highest level of agent you can be is a black coat. All right, a black coat means you go out and you fight against demons and devils and Lovecraftian monstrosities and and all these other things, vampires, werewolves, anything. You you go at those things, okay? That is your job. But it's also your job to seek out dissidents too. So you can do the more mundane things. You can be an assassin going after political uh, opponents. You can go. You can be someone who roots out. Uh, general um, uh, general dissidents against the throne. You can do all sorts. As a black coat, you can do it all, essentially. Um, and you know, there is very little oversight. You're allowed. To, you're given your resources and told to complete your to complete your mission. That's it. Okay. Those are the people that you'll be playing as when you're playing black coats together. You'll receive missions from handlers. You'll receive missions from from um, people that you meet on the street. Anything, anything that you want to do. You are given a very, very large swathe of things that you can do. Okay? So, uh, transport, you use mainly horses in this setting, although there are trains too. Again, think of the, the setting of Red Dead Redemption 2. And steampunk up and throw in a load, and I mean a load of Lovecraftian stuff in there. And, and you've basically got what we're talking about. Uh, the Driftwood, massive big uh, wasteland uh, that there is a lot of technology in. So the so the drift so the Dominion also sends you in there to try and get technology away from things like dragons and, and, and dead cities and all these other monstrosities out there. And generally, the further away from civilization you get, the worse the monsters become, as you can probably tell. So it is a huge it is a, it, it's a it's a huge setting, but one that you can read in a single sitting too. Right, that's what I wanted. I didn't want you to have to sit here and read through 45 pages of lore before you even start. You can sit down in two to three hours and you can read the entire lore of this setting. And you'll know exactly what you're doing, exactly where you're going. And I wanted you to have a feeling of when you're reading this, you're swallowed by the world. You know, it's almost, it's almost like you can almost smell the cigar smoke in some of these opium dens. You know, you can almost hear the clatter of hooves on cobblestones going past in the rain. You can almost hear the gunshots of, of, of ruffians in the back alleys going at each other over a piece of turf. Okay? And where I'm going to be placing in the game that we're going to play on the channel, because we are going to play one, 
Uh, but this will be me and a few friends. I'm going to play one, record one, probably this week. Uh, um, it's going to be set in New Corinth. A New Corinth is essentially um, the wretched hive of scum and villainy in our setting. It is not the capital of the Dominion, but it is the 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 idea capital of the of the Dominion. Okay, it's the it's the place where most of your basically the deals that are sealed in Edessa, which is the capital, they're all brokered in New Corinth, in the opium dens and 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 bars and clubs and theatres of New Corinth. All right, so that is. The setting, all right, and, and I've really, really barely touched the surface here. You have to, you have to say, I've not even touched on the state, the different states that we have, like Gavenland, which are basically Gavenland, for instance, is, is a state within the Dominion that's made up of Mecha Vikings. Okay, these are Vikings who use mechs and bionics and shit like that to, to fight their wars for them. Okay, they get into these big war suits and they hammer into people and things like that. That's what they do, right? That's Govenland. You know, you've got Glavia. Glavia are basically gunslingers, old school gunslingers, and that's one. And, and they, they are the uh, the epitome of the hero going out into the wastes and dragging back forbidden technology for the Dominion to use against its enemies. That kind of a thing. And it does have enemies. There are other kingdoms in this world apart from the Dominion. Um, so I'm going to go into no more of that, okay? Because you know we've got the black coats here. You know, the, the chambers of black coats. So you have all of the different chambers that you can be if you're a black coat, things like that. Um, it's not finished, of course. It needs touching up. Um, there are lots of things that need, that need tweaking, maybe. But as a, as a thing that can be read and played, it, th this game is now finished. Um, it is ready to be read. It is ready to be enjoyed. And whenever I'm ready, probably after the first session that we play... I'll release it probably on Patreon or yeah, on PayPal or something. I'll get something on the go, and you can go and you can you can order it and, and it'll be sent to you, okay, in PDF format. Now, the other thing that I wanted to go over is art. I want my own art. I want art to be in this game. If you know anybody who is a decent artist. Mainly black and white. I'm not really looking for color images, but mainly black and white stuff. If you know anybody who is a good artist who would really get their teeth into this, into into a demonic, steampunk, you know, assassin-style setting, let me know. And if you're that person, then please get in touch. Let me know, and um, and I'll get back to you because I would love to have some art in this uh, because it is a mighty tome at the moment. Again. There are certain parts that need formatting, like, like the spaces between pages and stuff, things like that. But that's mainly left there so that I can get some art in there. But when you when you actually buy it, you know, there will be... Again, I've, I've even got more rules to come. There will be more rules added as we go along in, in playtesting. Um, but as a game, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. It's ready to be played. We'll be playing it this week. Uh, re we really hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, this has been my saving grace for the past couple of months over the summer. And I've loved it. And I'm already planning my next one. As I format this, I'll be writing another setting as we're going along. Uh, but this is it. This is the first one for the channel that is done. It's completed. It's not pie in the sky talk. It's not, I'll do this and then we can play. It's done. It's finished. I'm just touching it up now. And here it is. Blackouts. So I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me ramble about it for a little bit. And... Again, can't wait to play it. Can't wait for you to, to see how it plays. And let's have some fun. See you later.